song is for those that know without a doubt in their mind. Thank you so much for joining us this morning at TNT Ministries. We hope that you will be impacted by the word of God. The 13th verse starts, it says, ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is henceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out, to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word for the sanctification of our soul. And what we're going to talk about today is your role in leadership. In every aspect uh, of your being. I have some little notes that I'm going to read first before we start to deal in the text. I would appreciate you listening. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Gordon Selfridge built one of the world's largest department stores in London. He achieved success by being a leader, not a boss. Here is your, here's our comparison of the two types of executives. The boss drives his men. The leader coaches them. The boss depends upon authority. The leader on goodwill. The boss inspires fear. The leader inspires enthusiasm. The boss says I. The leader say we. The boss fixes the blame for the breakdown. The, le the, the leader fixes the breakdown. The boss says, but the boss knows how it's done. The leader shows how it was done. The boss says, go. The leader says, let's go. Amen. Tom, we all know Tom Monahan, the founder of the Domino's Pizza chain. Uh, he was the founder and executive chief officer of Domino's from 1970 to 1985. Domino's grew from a small debt-written chain to the second largest pizza company in America. When, when asked to account for the phenomenal growth of his company, Monahan explained, I programmed everything to grow. And how did he plan for growth? He said that every day he developed people the key to growth is developing people. No special seed, no special cheese, not a tasty crust, crust, not fast delivery schedule, but people. People are the key to all effective leadership. Just one more. It is better to lead than to drive. It's better to pull than to push. Better to ask than to demand. All right. It's better to suggest uh -huh. than to insult. Uh -huh. It's better to inspire than to compare. Yes, it's better to motivate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> than to manipulate. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So what I want to talk to you about a little bit is everybody in here can't be a leader in church. The, the sheer fact that I am standing here today shows that there was some leadership put into the church. Somebody opened the doors. Somebody turned on the lights. Somebody had to make sure that it was clean. The pastor didn't do all that. But leadership did. There are different leadership philosophies. There are, there are things that we can put our finger on in leadership that will help us. I, 
I think that one of the things that we need to do, and I don't think it's even a word, but I'm going to say it, it should be called fellowship. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Now, see, now, we're talking about leaders, so now, is there any way that you can be a leader? I'm glad you asked. Amen. Now, you can lead people in your household. You can lead people on your job. Some of the problems that we have today is because of terrible leadership. It's not so much that people don't know how to lead. They, their motives are just wrong. You know, there are some things that you can do to where uh, you never hear the pastor saying, I'm the pastor. Why do you think that is? Because he does the work. A person that Red Charles could come in here and say, whatever that voice is, he's in charge. Right, right, right. Not because of his authoritarian sound, but because he's doing something. Yeah, yeah. There are some of us who want to be leaders who aspire to go higher. But our motives ain't right. right. Our motives are selfish. Yeah. We want to be the boss. We want to be the man. We want to, even on your job, there's some of you, have you ever wondered why you got passed over for the promotion? Have you ever wondered why? Mm. Well, now we know all things work for good. So, let, 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 today's Bible lesson started with what we call the Beatitudes. It was, it says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are they that moan, for they should be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. And then he throws a curve. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. We was doing good until we got to that. <laughs> Blessed are ye when men shall revile you. And persecute you and shall, say, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. And then he gets further on in the, in the word and then he says, ye are the light of the world. Well, there was old combat movies and they, in World War I the people would be in the foxholes and they would all be trying to be quiet. So that the enemy would not know where they was. They would be in some knucklehead would take and light a match. Yeah. And light a cigarette. And all let, let loose. Because they knew where they were. Yeah. Yeah. Because they knew where they were. So now he's saying that if we exhibit these attributes. These attributes by the way are attributes of kingdom people. There is no salvation in this. This is not how we're saved. This is, this is how we should act. These are things that we should measure ourselves to to see how good we're doing. See, so when they start talking about some of these blessings, it really sounds really good. But when you say that you are the light of the world, so now that means that that's like striking a match. Because the other verses were saying that they're going to be looking to get you. You know, one of the stories that, that when you read the Bibles, you start to see when Jesus starts off, everybody is wonderful. They just love him. But as he started to tell them the truth, then they decided that they were going to kill him. As a matter of fact, they, they got so heated, so lit up that they just had to say, he got to go. He got to go. He's shedding light on things that we don't want to see. Now, how can you be a leader? Uh, let me just say this. Is that you are the light of the world. 
whether you got the light the smallest as a little pin light, almost smaller than a Christmas tree light bulb, you are the light of the world. You are. You know, I used to think of the church itself as a beacon that, that shined out into the out on the on the on the dark seas and that would guide people even through storms that it would bring them to such a place of safety. Now that I have read more, you know, uh, we should be having a light in our houses. We got people in our houses that ain't saved. We should be a light on our job. We have people on our jobs that are looking to. They're not asking you what what Matthew five said. They want to see how you live. They want to see how you react to adversity. They want to see how you. See, because Richard Green Sr. used to say, you might be the only Bible that people read. They're not looking for that. You are put in a great position. I think it's such a wonderful thing that we can be said that we are the light of the world. I think that's wonderful. It's a great uh, compliment. But it also comes with responsibility. Normally as a rule, before you get privileges, you have to have responsibility. So the idea that you are the light of the world, whether you're a big light or a little light, you are the light of the world. So how can you intensify your life? You just have to do better. That just seems really be stupid, don't it? See, now, we know that faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. See, so if you want to just get a little bit better, open up the book. Start reading. Start trying to put yourself in a position to where you can help other people by that that you read. And then implement it in your own life. Then that way, they will not just hear it, they will see it. So now, Jesus... Has, he is sitting down with his disciples. And if, if these guys just all just sit here and just start talking, you might overhear it. But the people was listening. It wasn't just there, just the 12 that heard them. There was other people that was listening. I hope that today you're listening. I hope that you try to turn up, you know, they have lights to have a real stack. That means that you can turn them up and turn them down. We really good at turning them down. We find ways to turn them down. When we're at home, that I've always said that a lot of the times that our, the people in our house aren't saved is because our light is too low. It's just because our light is too low. It's not because God is not able to save. It's not because the word of God is not in the house. You know something? I think that if you're married, that your wife should cover you. I think that there are some things that you can do as individuals to be a leader. So now one of the things you can do is make sure your children pray. You know, you should be able to sit down and pray with them. You should be able to counsel your children. You should be able to work with them from what the word of God is saying. Not what Oprah said, not what some knucklehead on TV is saying, but out what the word of God is saying. You the light of the world. You know, you're not responsible for some things unless somebody tells you. Be put on notice. On notice. You are the light of the world. Whether you be just a little light or a big beacon, you are the light of the world. You should start shining so somebody can see your good work. There's a lot of things that, that just transpired. Now, when he compared us to salt, salt, it, it, it has a quality that it will preserve things. It will stop it from rotting. So that means if you see that the condition in your household is starting to decay, then you need a little bit more salt. Salt is not like any other thing. You know, there was a saying that says that he was not worth his salt. Do you know where that came from? That came from this book. Guess what? The Roman soldiers got paid in salt. The salt that they had was not Morton salt. 
It, when it rains, it pours. No, it was not that kind of salt. It was diluted. It had a lot of other things in it. And because of it, it could actually lose its favor. So if, a, if there was a scientist here, he would say, no, no, no. The chemical breakdown of, of makeup does not change in salt. But it can be overwhelmed. Some of you are overwhelmed because you're not doing anything. You're overwhelmed by anything. Sometimes we can't take nothing. This place should be seasoned just because you're here. If you're in an auxiliary, this, you, don't nothing happen till you come. You should take and be able to see that this season that's put in you, that is out for other people to see, that it will have a preserving effect. Now there are some of y'all in auxiliaries that are hell raised. Mm, huh. uh, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, Y'all not trying to, to make to, to season the atmosphere. You know something? That's one thing I come to choir rehearsal early so I can pray. You know why? Because it seasons the atmosphere. Not because I'm gonna do so well, not because anything else. And there's sometimes I won't do nothing. But it's just the idea that sometime if you get up and pray, your day will be better. simple thing. See, but now when, when we start talking about light, light does another thing. It illuminates. So if you're not living a proper life, it will light you up. Have you ever been lit up? You know, there are some things that you could tell me and sometimes I do mis misbehave at work. Sometimes I do. Uh, and a situation came about and the big boss came over and he said we got something difficult to say but what I want to see is to see what the preacher had to say <laughs> lit me right up <laughs> that that I was going to say I just said well Lord bless there are some times that you have to be reminded. You see preachers sometimes walk around that little collar around their neck. That's called a yoke. You know what that's for? It's just to remind you that you are a preacher. Should you have to be reminded, yep. I have pulled out in front of some people. Some of y'all, I stopped in front of one of y'all and I know that you was not singing. <laughs> I I oh, okay, well, we'll just leave that part alone. But, but there, in your leadership capacity, you can lead people to Christ. But you have to have something that, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on. Jesus just wrote y'all a letter. It's at your house. Your heart is your heart. Your house is your heart. And what it's saying is, oh, wait a minute, you didn't open it. That's the problem. There are things that we know to do, but we just didn't open the letter to find out what it was. Because if I open the letter, then I got to do better. If I, if I put down watching so much TV, then it's, it just messes up the thing. You know something? What I love about Jesus is that they, the, the song says, what you know about Jesus? He's all right. Yeah, see, now, I, I, you know something, what I know about some of y'all, some of y'all is all right. But are, is your light shining? Are you influencing everybody that you are around? If you're in the plant, are you infecting somebody? Are you affecting them? Are they tended to come to you and ask for prayer? Are you, oh, wait a minute, guess what? In order for you to be an effective leader, just like these are successful business people, you got to pour into somebody's life. You're going to have to find you a person. You're going to have to have that one person and that they be your assignment. That they're going to ask God about it first. And then you're going to pour into their life. You're going to help nurture them. You're going to pray for them. Jesus told Peter that Satan desired to sift you like wheat. But I pray for you. You can do the same thing. You can see your children being sifted. You can take and pray for them. And the Lord will bless them. 
there's countless numbers of things where people in the scriptures where somebody else prayed for them. There was a ruler. This ruler took and had his daughter and his daughter was about ready to die. He came to Jesus and Jesus said, take me to him. No, no, no. You don't have to. That's all you have to do. Just speak the word. See, and, and Jesus was marveled because he said, I haven't seen that type of faith. I haven't seen that stuff around here. Don't let it be said that he haven't let it seen in your house like that. You know something, there's some things that we should believe in that we don't believe in. We have power. We have special privileges with the Lord. But we don't use them. Why is that? Sometimes you have to learn to, to, how do you know if you have healing hands? How do you know? You've got to go and touch somebody. You know, how do you know that you can that you can give sight to the blind? You've got to have enough nerve to do it. If you, how are you going to know that you can pray for the sick and they get well? Because you've got to do it. This is not a talking way. This is a doing way. It's not because of your works. It's just because God is good. God has power. You can tap into his power. You can, you can tap right into his power. Where we live at, at Cherry Hill Middle Belt, if anything happens, our lights go out. We live in the poorest grid, I think, around here. If you ever want to know it was like four days and we was without lights. Four days. And you know something? What was really was amazing was it was terrible. I went out in the, on the fourth day, but besides that, what I learned was that all Chili's commercials and all them other people's commercials, they look, that food looked really good. But when you go there, it ain't as good as it looked. That's another lesson for another day. There are some people in here that look real good and work for them. Thank you. So now, now you have to take in on this last day. I'm sitting out in the backyard. Done went to church. Done done my praying. I'm sitting out there and I'm saying, Lord, we need to have some lights. Me and Deborah have been together so much, it was getting to be crazy. <laughs> no TV, no interference, no air conditioning. No nothing. Mm, 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 mm. I'm sitting out in the backyard in the chair. I'm just looking across the street because the people on the street got lights. I say, Lord, what about my lights? What about my lights? I'm sitting there and I watch. And then I'm looking over there on the side. There's a truck over there with some people in it. And one of them trucks is supposed to be fixing stuff. They're sitting there. And then they taking off their shirts and they getting water and doing extra things. I'm going, you need to be getting over here and fixing my light. <laughs> Went on a little bit further, seen another truck come over there. And I'm saying, uh, y'all just, you're doing this to mock me. There was all of a sudden four trucks full of people. They all in the parking lot. They just milling around, having a big time. And I'm still saying, I need my lights. There was a man with the smallest truck. He had a pickup truck. He come out the laundromat. And I'm saying, Lord, what, what are you going to do? What are you going to do, Lord? He came straight across. He started driving straight. I said, uh-oh. He just got that one little truck. I don't think he's going to be able to do much. But he took and pulled up on the curb and backed up. He said, okay, all right, maybe it's our time. And I just started thanking God already. See, sometimes before you see it, you got to thank him. I call it being thanking him declaratively. That you need to be able to thank God before it manifests. Sometimes you can thank him before the problem manifests and it'll go away. Mm, okay, so now, so now. I'm seeing another truck, the big truck, come over. And the guy said, he, he, he hollered over the fence and said, do you mind if we uh, cut this lock off, off your fence? My answer to him was, no, I do not mind. If you turn on my, get my lights turned on, you can tear down the fence. I'll put up another. 
So he, un he took his little thing, he cut the lock off, he came on in the yard, and they started working. Yeah. And what I noticed was that he had an apprentice. Right. The apprentice was a person that was learning the job. He told him, he said, go get the boat cutters. He jumped over the fence and went and got the boat, sh boat cutters, and then he came back. And then he said, cut the lock off. Then he said, cut the lock off. What I found out from looking at that young man, and I had to talk to him, because I was amazed at how diligent he did the things that he was asked to do. So now I'm not even thinking about my life. I'm looking at this young man as a, an example of, I want to learn. And he was already making big money. He said he would make good money. He took and left from, he lived in the middle part of the state. He came down just because we didn't have no lights. Now don't tell me God won't do something for you. Amen. He, he had somebody come a long distance to help me. And I was so happy. That man took and they got that wire and they start running the wire and they start doing stuff. And all of a sudden they said, well, wait a minute. We got to go and get somebody else to turn the power on. And then I said, well, how long do you think we're going to have to wait? He said, it won't be long. So you know something? There's a lot of times in your life, it won't be long. Because if you start pouring into somebody else's life, it won't be long before they'll take and be able to help you. They, it won't be, it'll be time for them to help somebody else. Some of us are so selfish. We just selfish. We don't even speak. How can you let your light shine if you can't say hi? This is not a Christian principle. I know some people that speak. You go to, I, I've been to other places. I wasn't raised in the church. I go to places that people hey, hey, hello. And you know something? Some of the things that we some of the things that we do, we find that a whole bunch of the stuff is because we're not letting our light shine. The, 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 in, in John it says that the light shineth in darkness. Right. Now what's the funny part? But the darkness couldn't comprehend it. Uh -huh. yeah. It did. It started talking about a man named John. You know some, some of the things that you don't understand, you need to pray about. It. Right. Amen. You need to take it. You know, now, I used to think that this would just, to everything could be answered if you came to Bible class. I found out that ain't true. Right. Because there's some things that you have a mental block against. Yeah, right. There's some things and strongholds that you have that need to be rooted out. Right. Amen. You, there's some things in your life that you need to stop doing. There's some things in your life that really, 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 really put a dim on your life. Yeah, come on, but you know, I wanted to really think about this is you know, this is not good. Okay. Now, you know something, you know, about salt. It's just like we have a ton of salt in this building. What a powerful time in the Lord. Please join us every second Sunday at 11 o'clock a.m. If you have prayer requests or questions, please email us at TNT teaching ministries at gmail.com. We pray that the blessings of the Lord would overtake you. God bless you.